We are going to continue our discussion of biogeochemical cycles. Yesterday, or the last one, was on water. Today we're going to talk about, by the way, water is H2O. You see that in water, we have the element hydrogen and the element oxygen. Now, briefly here, let's talk about this. Because there are four elements. We haven't talked about chemistry yet. Maybe we should have. The elements that make up all living things are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. There's also phosphorus, which we are not going to deal with. Two of the elements, and by the way, these are in the order that if we were to take you apart and have and lay all your atoms out in piles, all the atoms that make you up into piles, the biggest pile would be carbon, then hydrogen, then oxygen, then nitrogen, then phosphorus. But what we're talking about here is we're talking about the how, okay, if all matter, these are matter, okay, and if matter cycles, it's never lost, it's never gained. It's an important idea. It's never lost, never gained. Today we want to talk about cycle number two. And cycle number two is the carbon cycle. Carbon. Okay. We're going to deal with a couple of what I call major misconceptions here in science. Let's start off with where we find carbon. We find carbon most existent in the atmosphere as CO2 also known as carbon dioxide. CO2 exists in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. There's a problem. The problem is that things like people can't use carbon in that form. Well, Fortunately for us, there are things in the world called plants. Everybody can recognize that's a tree. The tree takes in carbon dioxide. The tree takes in carbon dioxide through its leaves. You may have learned in elementary school that a tree breathes it in. Now remember that trees don't really breathe. If trees really breathe, you would be sitting in a tree stand and listening to the tree go <laughs> as you're hunting, and that would be a little uh, weird. You probably wouldn't hunt very long if that were true. So, tree, quote, breathes in carbon dioxide, takes it in. What it does with it is a process called photosynthesis. And maybe you've heard of it. And in photosynthesis, the tree, or any plant, I probably shouldn't have drawn a tree here, as you'll see in a minute, converts CO2 into the stuff that makes it up. Something called glucose, which I'm going to write like this for now, which later on this year we'll talk about. The so plant takes carbon dioxide and converts it into a different form. Okay, so now the carbon is taken out of the air and it's put into a plant. What about an animal? I'll draw a deer, because I can draw antlers. I guess it's a weird looking deer. How does the animal get carbon? Well, the animal gets carbon by eating plants. And you're like, well, animals don't eat trees. Some, yeah, they do. A deer will eat the branches of a tree in the winter. You'll snip on the buds and they'll eat them the trees. They'll come and eat my flowers right in my, next to my house if they're hungry enough. So 
zero eat plants, and then humans eat plants. And sometimes we might have to have a human then eat the deer. So the carbon that was here is now in the tree, is now in the deer, is in us. Okay, how do we put the carbon back in the atmosphere? Well, the number one way to put carbon back into the atmosphere is by exhaling. Right? And you learned this back in elementary school that plants breathe in carbon dioxide, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So, we take in carbon by eating it, and we exhale it, as carbon dioxide, which makes a really interesting statement that what we eat, we breathe out. And notice now we have a cycle. We have carbon coming in, carbon going out. Now, not all plants get eaten, not all animals get eaten, not all. So, what happens if these plants die? What happens if the animal dies? Well, what happens when they die is, well, a lot of things can happen. Number one, they're, they can be uh, decomposed by decomposers, and their carbon is put back in the atmosphere that way. Sometimes, plants die and draw the ground here, and over long periods of time get compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed, and, compressed, and we get something called fossil fuel. Pools of liquid deep in the ground, or sometimes gas, deep in the ground, that are the remains of dead plants and animals, that are carbon I'm going to slide over to the next slide and talk about this. So here's the ground. Here's our fossil fuel. And what have we humans done? Well, we humans have pumped that fossil fuel out of the ground. And we use it to make our cars go. And we use it for our factory buildings. And those things are putting carbon back into the air. See, this carbon that used to be trapped in the ground is now being put back into the atmosphere. So what? Well, this is the Earth. Around the earth, around the earth is a layer called the atmosphere, and that has the air we breathe. Now, one thing we have to talk about briefly here when we talk about the carbon cycle is the greenhouse effect. How does the greenhouse work? Well, I'm going to draw a little skinny greenhouse down here in the corner. Light shines from the sun into the greenhouse because light is energy, and we're going to talk about this a little later. Light is energy, and it heats up the air in the greenhouse, but the air in the greenhouse is stuck in here. So the, as the air gets hot, it stays in here because it's matter, but light gets out. But the heat is trapped in the greenhouse because of the glass. The same essential thing happens to the earth. Energy coming in and hitting the earth heats up the atmosphere. You can see the earth from space, so light is coming back out, but not heat, because it's trapped by the atmosphere. Well, as humans have added carbon to the atmosphere, it's actually made this layer thicker. This layer in the atmosphere that is trapping the heat is thicker. So because it's thicker, theoretically, it's trapping more heat. 
if you make a greenhouse with thicker windows, it stays warm longer. That makes sense. If you add a layer of carbon to our atmosphere, less heat escapes. We call it the greenhouse effect. Works like a greenhouse. 